All right, we're gonna learn how to play the song Black Clouds, which is it about black clouds or is it a metaphor for something else? You decide. But first we're gonna talk about the acoustic guitar chords, then I'm gonna jump to the electric guitar solo later on if you wanna skip to that, because to me it is like the quintessential Sean Daniel guitar solo as far as like how I feel about lead playing and stuff like that. But we're gonna start with the acoustic and actually this song was written on a piano. So uh, I might do a piano tutorial on it. If any of you guys are interested, let me know. But we're gonna start with an acoustic guitar, capo on the third fret. We're doing this because I wanna use some open chords, right? So it's really in C minor, but when you have a capo on the third fret, uh, the A minor becomes a C minor in reality, right? So we're gonna start, it's in a waltz, it's in three, right? So A minor to E, that's the first part. And basically the song has like three parts. So the first one sounds like this. At this moment there's nothing to do But ask myself what's even left to lose What's the point of a clean bill of health my heart's been broken, I've worn it so well. So basically we've got a couple times around on each one. It really kind of jumps back and forth between this A minor and E minor, or C sharp minor and G minor, if you want to look at it that way, in reality, right? So I'm just going to be talking about the chords in relation to the capo, but we've got like a one, two, three, like a root, chord, chord, root, chord, chord, again. The second time through, I kind of stop on that E minor, right? So it's like once. Leave a little bit of space, then it comes back. Same thing. So the second set of chords is gonna be a D minor. And a lot of times I'll hammer the F on the D minor, so it's kind of like a D suspended two. Hammer it into a D minor, to a C. Walking the C back to an A minor. So this is connecting two chords. I'm connecting a C to an A minor by walking the root note from a C to a B to an A. And the only other thing I do in the verse is sometimes I'll go and the second one around. So it'd be like an A minor to an E minor to an A minor, add the G. And then when it goes into what we'll call the chorus, we're still doing that walk, but now we're walking to a, an F major seven, right? So the chorus with the vocals sounds like this. Since my heart's been broken, I've worn it so well. And then no one around me can tell the truth from this image I sell. When your guess is almost as good as my uh, Alright, so same kind of rhythm, but different chords. We're gonna take it from the D minor, the end of the verse, to an F major 7. Okay, F major 7, my favorite chord. So we're gonna stay on this uh, F major 7 for two counts. One, two, three, one, two, three, to an A minor for one count and then a G for one count. Now I'm playing the G like this. A lot of people play it like this, that's fine, but I'm getting the D note on top, so I'm not hearing the, the E string, so I'm not getting like a, an extra G in this chord, I'm getting an extra D. So to me, the more efficient way to do that is just to drop my pinky here and play the front with my ring finger, so three, two, open, open, three. So again, how I play a G major open chord just kind of depends on where I come from, where I'm going. This way, from an A minor, I usually go to this G, right? So, uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, F for two counts. One count A minor, one count G, F. And the last time, we end on an F. G7, right? So again, that last time, instead of kind of repeating the same thing. Uh, 
E7 is gonna be the chord to kind of create a little bit of tension. And then I'm gonna bring that down to a G7. I use a bar chord G7, uh, which is again, just a regular G major bar chord pinky up. You could easily use this G7. I don't really, you know what? I don't like this G7. I feel like that kind of, the, the F on top always kind of makes it sound kind of wimpy. I don't know. This is the G7 I prefer right here. So again, the whole chorus. And then the only other part is going to be, I don't know, a bridge. Well, it's a bridge, I suppose. Uh, and I actually use bar chords here, but you can use open chords if you want to. But it uh, sounds like this. I'm using bar chords, uh, we'll talk about it in a second, but first of all, it's just a D minor. One, two, three, again, two counts, and then A minor to G. So it's really similar. You can play it like open. Like that. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because when we do the uh, descension, yeah. is because when we would uh, do the thing where we're walking down to the beginning, D minor, A, G, F. And then back into that E7, G7. That E7, G7 almost acts kind of like a blues turnaround, I guess, to get, a, get us back to the A. But again, the reason I like using uh, the bar chord voicings here is because I can really hear the root note uh, in a way that I can control it instead of going. I just kind of like using bar chords when I'm doing uh, kind of runs either up or down anyways. Yeah, so those are the chords of the song. And now let's get to the electric guitar part. <laughs> So, I like this solo a lot. I feel like it's indicative of who I am as a lead player because uh, I am more of the mind that when I think of lead playing, I kind of think of uh, short melodic solos that kind of follow the chords a little bit, right? Uh, some of the songs on the album have longer solos, which is more of like a storytelling thing, I guess I kind of tried to use because it's like a concept album. But it, at my soul, I'm just kind of like, uh, I take one verse, hit the solo over that verse, end it, get back to the song type of guy. Nothing wrong with super long drawn out solos. I just think naturally when I think of phrasing, this is how I think about it. And we're gonna start in the C minor pentatonic shape, which is a great place to start for anything, right? And again, like I said, it was in C minor, so now we're not using the capo anymore. So I'm thinking of C being the eighth fret that. That minor pentatonic shape like so many of us know and love, right? I think we're gonna break this into four parts, right? So part one is like this. Okay, so really just uh, uh, an, an easy little pentatonic thing. I'm starting on the G string, ring finger. Kind of getting a, like a quick unison bend. And then going to my index finger on the G string. So eight or 10 with a bend to eight. And then up a string to the D string. 10, 8, 10. And then. So, really classic, classy pentatonic blues stuff. Bend, back, up a string. Then A string. So, 
So after that, that uh, kind of pull off to the A string, we've got a couple hammer runs. So eight to ten, eight. So really slow. Okay, so that's part one. Then we're gonna go up here. So again, I'm still thinking C minor. Now I'm thinking more of a C minor chord and not of a pentonic shape. And I'm taking the triad here. Now what I'm doing is I'm just getting five G sliding into it, climbing up, going back. Into the triad, right? So this is just a C minor chord. And now I'm just climbing up through the scale. Three, four, six, eight. Right? So you can almost think of it as an arpeggio. And I'm picking all these notes. So now once I get to the eighth fret, I'm kind of thinking of a different pentatonic shape. So I've got six or eight, six, eight, six on the B string. So I'm kind of going backwards through this and ending on this D note right here. So again, that whole second part. Uh. Now from this is gonna be the third part. Okay, now I'm trying to, I'm thinking of phrasing again, phrasing just kind of like where I'm gonna play this. And I wanna get from this C minor shape into this C minor shape, an octave up. So I'm bridging that together with a C power chord. There's a C power chord, an octave higher is gonna be the 10th fret of the D string and the 12th fret of the G string. So I'm getting down to this. This is almost kind of like my buffer in between these two shapes. And now my ring finger can guide, after I go D, G, D, my ring finger is guiding the way into that same voicing that we did up here. And then after I slide into it, I'm just arpeggiating it. Up. And again, my ring finger is on 17 G. My middle finger is staircasing it up, 16 to point your finger 15 on E. And then I'm back in pentatonic. So really it's just the 18th, or no, it's, what is this? 15 is, yeah, 18th fret. Pull off, oh, I'm picking it. So. And then I kind of just create the illusion of movement, I suppose, by sliding back like that, right? So that's part three. And then the last part. So it's kind of playing around in that shape again until we end on a C, until we resolve it on a C. So what I'm doing is, I'm kind of getting uh, a little hammer on spot right here. So I'm on 16B to 18. And then I'm doing a hammer on and a pull off. And then up to the G string middle finger on 17. So after that, I'm kind of thinking of pentatonics again. 17 G, 17, 15, up a string, 17. And then I'm gonna slide from 17 to 15 on the D string. Back to 17. 
13, 13, 12, slide up to 15A, which is a, which is a C note, right? So we're, we're kind of starting and ending on that C note. Right? So C minor, C minor pentatonic is, is a big part of this. So again, all the parts uh, kind of slow down. So that's how you play uh, the solo of the song Black Clouds. Definitely any questions or comments you have, let me know and I'll hit you up soon. Thanks a lot.